Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So, why is working on yourself so critical for your relationship to thrive? Well, let me first of all start with a quote by Diane Vaughn Furstenberg. She says that the most important relationship in your life is the relationship you have with yourself because no matter what happens, you will always be with yourself. And that is absolutely so true. Because having a relationship with yourself is just like any other relationship. It's filled with ups and downs and highs and lows. And you're wondering sometimes, what am I doing here by myself? Or, <laughs> you know, why do I need to work on myself? How come things aren't falling in line the way that I want them to fall in line? And all of those things are very important things to think about and also to answer at some point. But it's very critical to work on yourself. And I have um, seven reasons why it's critical to work on yourself in order to have your relationship thrive. Let's talk about it in a moment. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So the very first reason why it is so critical for you to work on yourself in order for your relationship to thrive is because there is no other relationship that is going to be healthy without you loving yourself. So you have to have a healthy relationship with yourself in order for your relationship, meaning your romantic relationship, to thrive with another person. You have to be completely in love with yourself. Your relationship with yourself needs to be super healthy um, because this is going to be the only way that you love or fall in love, I should say, for the right reasons. Right, because a lot of times we get into these relationships where we're in them for the wrong reasons. We're in them thinking that the person's going to have to make us happy or have to do this and have to do that, which is not necessarily true. Uh, we want to work on ourselves to make sure that our romantic relationship, that we're actually choosing the right person to be in a romantic relationship with, and you'll never be able to experience the true beauty of what love can actually bring you if you never work on yourself. So that is the very first thing. No other relationship that you get into, even sometimes your friendships, none of those things are going to be healthy. You're never going to be fully connected to the other person without you really loving on yourself first. The second thing, the second reason why you need to work on yourself in order for your romantic relationship to work out is because you'll never be able to fully embrace all the love that the person wants to share with you, that they want to give to you because you have these walls and these barriers up. And um, some of the walls and the barriers could have come from your past relationships. So some of the things that happened in your past relationship, whether you didn't like the way they were talking to you or whether they were being abusive or whether you got cheated on. That's a plethora of reasons why your romantic relationships didn't work out before and you were not able to fully embrace all of the love and um, be able to even give fully all of the love that you needed to give because of the relationship barriers that are holding you back. It could be your belief systems, and it also could be that subconscious programming that we received when we were children, or I should say when you were a child, and um, you never thought about it like this. And so all of the things that you're doing right, all the things that you're doing wrong, all of this is coming from the programming that you received when you were a child. All right. So that is the second thing. You'll never be able to fully accept and embrace all the love that your partner has given to you or be able to give it out yourself. The third reason why you need to work on yourself in order for your romantic relationship to work out is because it actually makes you respect yourself and it increases your value for yourself and your partner. Your partner definitely recognizes this as well because you will notice and will be able to put a stop to not just accepting any type of behavior and or bad treatment from your partner. Working on yourself helps to build up that self-esteem. It helps to build up that confidence. So you're not so you're not just taking anything, accepting anything just because your partner said it. Mm -mm, it don't work like that. The fourth thing, I think I'm on number four, you'll be able to recognize when your partner doesn't want the best for you, 
or for the two of you, or even for the relationship. And what I mean by that is because you're working on yourself, you're building up your confidence, you're building up your self-esteem, you're able to um, have all of these tough conversations with yourself, like, what am I not doing right? Okay, this is what I wasn't doing right. This is what I need to work on. And so you'll be able to see and even hear the BS that your partner's saying to you. For instance, if they're not interested in moving the relationship forward, you'll be able to see and actually hear and um, seeing is the actions and then hearing what, they, what they're saying to you. If they really don't want to move the relationship forward, you'll be able to recognize that. Um, and they'll give you a lot of excuses and that'll be the reason or a way for you to understand and see that they don't want the best for you. They really don't want the best for the relationship, but unfortunately they are too much of a coward to let this go. They're too much of a coward to let you go, to let it go, and it could be some financial reasons why. Um, maybe you guys live together, or maybe because you guys have children, and they're just like, okay, well, I need to stick around because Billy needs to grow up. He needs to have this two-parent home, when in fact, and I said this before, but if you're new to my channel, this might be something new that you're hearing for the first time, which is children actually thrive better in um the households where the parents are separated versus being in the household where they're together, seeing how miserable the parents are. So you're actually, your children thrive better in a separate household. The next thing is that it actually increases your personal responsibility for the choices that you are making and even your reactions. The choices has to do with the person that you chose to mate with, that you chose to um parents with, that you to chose to cohabitate with, that you chose to marry. So that is the choice that I'm talking about specifically. And then you'll recognize, you know what? It wasn't always his fault. It wasn't always her fault. It was my fault for choosing him. It was my fault for choosing her when they weren't ready. Maybe maybe you weren't ready at the time when you got into this particular relationship. And now that you're working on yourself, you're like, you know what? I do see some faults in me. However, if I'm the only person that's working on myself and the other party is not, it's not matching up and at some point you guys are actually going to grow apart because if you're the only person who has this growth mindset right and your partner is staying stuck where they are and they never are growing in any part of their life that is eventually going to be an issue and you guys are going to grow apart so working on yourself increases your chances again of you choosing the correct mate but also taking responsibility for your choices. Now let's move on to the actions part, your reactions part of this. You'll be able to take responsibility for your act reactions because you'll understand that nobody can make you do anything that you don't want to do. No matter what they say to you, how they say it to you, sometimes it's best just to be quiet. I know that that can be a tough thing because you want to show this person you can't do what you want to do when you're with me and all this stuff. But really in the end, you cannot control anybody else. The only control that you have is over yourself. That's it. That is it. It doesn't matter what he or she did to you. It doesn't matter how they, how they said it to you. It doesn't matter, period. You control you and only you. That's it. The next thing is it actually helps you build up your confidence by being able to ask for what you want. So say, for instance, um, like I talked about before, they're not moving the relationship forward, right? You know that you want the relationship to move forward, whether it's into a long term relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend relationship or even the marriage. But you notice that every time some of those conversations come up, he or she either stalls or they change the subject or, you know, they, they divert from answering the question. Your confidence will be like, you know what? I noticed that every time this subject comes up, you actually duck and dodge it. Can you tell me what's going on with that? And then y'all able to have a, um, a grown up adult conversation about what's actually going on. And that will give you some information to say, you know what? I just need to move on. This is not right for me. And that's okay. It'll give you the opportunity to see what's actually in front of you instead of what you want to be in front of you without any guilt without you being rude, without, um, you know, you being like, oh, you took all this time and you knew X, Y, and Z. Because sometimes the truth of the matter is we don't really know what we want until we get into until we get into these situations and we're learning more and more about the person. We thought that the person was one way and they're actually this way and I really don't like this person, but now I'm too deep in not realizing that the sooner that you get out, the better versus waiting longer and longer. 
So working on yourself will give you the confidence to speak up for yourself and ask for what you want. The last tip is working on yourself will help you, especially if it's time to walk away. If it's time to go, you will know that it's time to go because you know what? You're not getting what you need. You're not getting what you want. And your partner, you have given them ample time. This is the key. You can't say that um, I'm walking away, but you never gave your partner the time the, the time to actually get their act together, which means you have to have the tough conversations. So if you never had the tough conversation with them, you have to give them an opportunity to correct said behavior because the truth of the matter is you could think that they know what you're thinking, but none of us are mind readers and they probably do not have any clue as to what you're thinking. And so for you to just pick up and leave, that actually is unfair. So be a big girl, be a big boy, have the tough conversations, give them ample time to correct said behavior. And the time frame actually depends on you. I can't tell you what the time frame needs to be because what works for me and doesn't work for me might, you know, might not match up to what you what you're saying. So you might need to leave a lot sooner than I, or maybe I need my you know, need to leave a lot sooner than you do. So the time frame is completely up to you. But once you get your time frame, put it in your head. You don't even have to share it with your spouse, put it in your head, and when it's time to go, then you do just that. All right. So working on yourself gives you the confidence to walk away if you're not getting what you need, if you're not getting what you want. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Deuces.